And one thing I have learned is most certainly worth making is cider. Which brings me on to my third visit to meet three neighbours, Nick, Dick and Nevin. I think this is probably the leafiest and most suburban street I've ever been on. What is lovely, immaculately kept little front gardens have got all sorts of marvellous trees in them. It couldn't really be more ordinary. I'm in Guildford. It's a detached house, half brick, half pebble dash, with a rather nice arts and crafts porch on the front, and it's on a wonderful British street. This is not the street where you'd imagine new world-class inventions, but behind the door of number 16 is a revolutionary new way to make cider, the juice and strain method. Hello. Hello there. <laughs> I'm Tim from the Food Program. How did you do, Tim? I'm Nevin. Wow. If you want to go through, I'll introduce you to Nick and Dick. Hello. So where is your enormous cider press? I'm wow. expecting a shed at the bottom of the garden with we some... We haven't got one. That's the secret. Okay, hold on a moment. Before we get into the story, I need to try and distinguish these three characters for you. So you've just heard from the cerebral, kind, modest Nick. I'm Nick Macduff, I live at number 11, and uh, I spent 40 years working for the diplomatic service. The muscles behind the operation is Dick, hard-working man, strong hands and a weathered face. And my name's Dick Nevitt, and um, I live at number 26, but basically I was a carpenter for 50-odd years. And last but not least, the ringleader. My name's Nevin Stewart. Nevin is a Scotsman with a Father Christmas beard and a mischievous smile. He's also the kind of guy that spent his whole life tearing things apart and then trying to put them back together again, experimenting, inventing. My career was as a research chemist with British Petroleum and uh, I have a number of inventions and patents um, and I was thrilled and delighted to be able to re-exercise some of these skills that I'd acquired in making cider. I'll let Nevin get back to the story. Well, well, back in 2011, Nick's tree had a bumper crop, uh, 300 kilograms of fruit, and th they were just going to go up onto the compost heap. Uh, so we were chatting about this over a pub lunch, what we're going to do with this bumper crop of apples. And the suggestion was, well, let's, uh, let's try making cider. We didn't know how we were going to go about doing it, but uh, we were sure that we didn't want to spend any serious money. So our daughter offered up her um, small-scale kitchen juicer that would accept slices of apples minus pips. And three of us spent three hours juicing apples one afternoon, and we ended up with three gallons, three demijohns worth of apple juice. It was jolly hard work oh. doing it that way. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Took forever. So we thought, no, this is, this is not the way forward. But Nick had a discovery. Yeah, so I happened to be in a charity shop a few days later and I saw an enormous juicing machine. And I thought, ah, oh, we might be able to get some more, you know, bigger apples through that without slicing them up. So, so I told Nevin, he gamely went and bought the machine. And we've never looked back from there. I'm really impressed with that. <laughs> what a lovely thought. Do you want me to put the kit together? Absolutely, yes please, let's, let's, let's have a look at how it's done. Um, so that shreds the apple, the pulp gets thrown against the fine mesh mm -hmm. of the centrifuge basket, the juice comes through, comes out there, and the pulp is ejected out the back. I've, I've never seen this happen, this is, a conti this is going to be a complete continuous process. As long as you're dropping apples on the top, it's going to pump liquid out the front and pulp out the back. It does, yep. That's amazing. And gentlemen, have you washed your hands? Yes. No. Can I scrub in as well? Please do. <laughs> Thank you. Want to have a go? Yeah. Do you want to start off? The J4. Starting with the J4. That's the official name of the of the juicer. It is. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You're on. If you've never tried to make cider before using a traditional cider press, then let me explain how revolutionary this is. A cider press takes ages, it's very messy, it uses a lot of manpower. But with juice and strain, Dick puts the apples in the strainer, Nick switches on the machine, and Nevin collects the fresh juice at the end. Incredibly simple, and developed by a trio of DIY food enthusiasts in their kitchen in Guildford. Oh, the smell coming off is lovely. Hear it dripping now from the holes of the bucket. Uh -huh. So this is the bit where we just sit and watch it trickle. 
Or we could have some lunch. <laughs> That's an idea. So, we trot off to the dining room for some manly quiche, accompanied, of course, by some stonking homemade cider. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Yeah. Very, very fresh milk. Are you getting apples? Oh, yes. Wow. It is an amazing thing of fulfilment, isn't it? It's a, it's a, it's a pleasure in having done it and seeing the process through. I don't know what it is. I still can't parse that out, but there's something about starting with thing A, finishing with thing B, and having gone right the way through it that feels really good. Yeah, I think, yeah, and also the being with friends, making it. You come up here or wherever we do it, and um, it's just been nice to be with people. You know, now we're retired, we need to do things. Dick, Nick and Nevin, the cider makers of Guildford. And in coming months, there'll be a whole food programme devoted to the UK cider revolution.